So I had this idea of making a video with power towers of i, where i is the square root of minus one. But I wanted to look and see if there was anything on YouTube yet. So I looked around and I found one where the result seemed quite nice. But when I looked at it more closely, there was a bit of a mistake. And the mistake comes from this like broader fact that exponentiation is not associative. And what I mean by here is when we write a to the b to the c, what we really mean is a to the power of b to the c. But that's not the same as a to the bth power and then raised to the c because by exponent rules that's a to the bc. And so I think if you write it like this with these sets of parentheses, it's clear that we have non-associativity. But I guess maybe the real leap here is our choice kind of as mathematicians to choose this association for our a to the b to the c. Which like really makes sense in the world of non-associative algebra in that you generally associate from the right to the left, which is what's done here, instead of from the left to the right. Okay, so anyway, the big point of this video is that exponentiation is non-associative. And I want to highlight that with these two examples. So i to the i to the i versus i to the i to the ith power. And we'll see that one of these is quite nice where one of them is like kind of a bummer. And one of them is nice in a way that if you keep repeating this exponentiation, it just gets nicer and nicer and nicer, whereas one kind of blows up and gets super gnarly. Okay, but before we jump into our calculation here, let's just recall that if we have e to the i theta, we can think about that as cosine theta plus i sine theta. So this is our complex exponential written with Euler's formula. And what's really going on here is that allows us to take this complex plane and think about a complex number that has a modulus of 1. So in other words, it is one unit from the origin via its argument. So if this is an angle theta right here, this is the complex number e to the i theta. Like I said, assuming that we've set this thing up so that this is a circle of radius one. Okay, but now let's notice that the number i is right here. So it's on the imaginary axis, it's one unit from the origin along the imaginary axis. So that means we can write i as e to the i pi over two. And that's backed up by this Euler's formula right here, given that cosine of pi over two is zero, whereas sine of pi over two is one. Okay, but this is like essentially the big trick in order to calculate these power towers of i is to use this polar form. Now let's notice that i to the i is in fact e to the i pi over two raised to the ith power. And the important thing here is we're rewriting this i that's in the base as e to the i pi over 2, which sets up our associativity where we have parentheses around this. But now we can use exponent rules to write this as e to the i squared times pi over 2, which is e to the minus pi over 2. Now there are a couple of videos on YouTube calculating i to the i and getting e to the minus pi over two that have millions and millions and millions of views. So this is a famous result. But now we can piggyback off this result to highlight our non-associativity of this complex exponentiation. Well, really any exponentiation. Okay, so let's do this one first. So let's recall that in non-associative operations, you assume that the parentheses are coming from the right. So this is really i to the power i to the i. But now we'll take this lower i and write it as e to the i pi over 2, and this upper i to the i and write it as e to the minus pi over 2. Okay, so that gives us e to the i pi over 2, and that's all raised to the power e to the minus pi over 2. Now we can apply exponent rules to that, and that'll give us e to the i pi over 2 times e to the minus pi over 2. 
So that's really as simple as it gets. Maybe we could write it with cosines and sines if we wanted to. That would give us cosine of pi over two e to the minus pi over two plus i sine of the same thing. So I'll just put a dash there so I don't have to write it out. Okay, so like I said, that's really not super nice. And if we were to continue doing this, it would get worse and worse and worse and worse. But let's look at what's happening if it's associated this way. If it's associated this way, we can take this i to the i and rewrite it as e to the minus pi over two, and then we're raising that to the ith power. But notice that's just exactly equal to e to the minus pi over two times i. But if we look over here, that goes down here to the number minus i, given the argument here is minus pi over two. So anyway, here we get minus i. But if we were to calculate this a different way, you would notice that we get the same thing. So this is i to the i to the i using this exponent rule down here. That's i to the i squared, which is i to the minus one, which is one over i, but that's also equal to minus i. Okay, so the calculations we did here were not super fancy, but I think that these two examples or these two example calculations are a nice kind of exploration into the non-associativity of exponentiation. And that's a good place to stop.